Oh, good morning, good people. Mm. I just love starting my day. My cup of coffee. Ah. Shout out to Ron Oliver, man, who's done some incredible mixes and things. Mm, 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 mm. Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. We get to kick back and relax. We're not on the edge tonight, tomorrow. We can watch and see what the Eagles do against the San Francisco 49ers. You know, it's kind of crazy. You know, our team is sitting at home, maxing and relaxing with a 9-3 and three record. And right now, right now, no matter what happens this weekend, the Dallas Cowboys, I don't care who you saying they played. I don't care who you say they played. will have at least the second best record in the NFL. Baltimore Ravens are having the bye week. They're at nine and three. You can't do any better than that. Um, if San Francisco beats the Eagles, they'll be nine and three. And, of course, if the Eagles lose to San Francisco, then that means we're only one game behind them with a game to play them next week. No matter what happens with the Cowboys, it's always like we lose. It just is. I'm just sitting here listening to, to all the talking heads. You know, we've got Shady McCoy, who originally was Mr. Ass Ass. We're going to call Shady McCoy Mr. Butt Butt. He's Butt Butt. Um, he literally, no matter what the cowboy, but, 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 okay. They're killing us about, they're killing us about our game and win against Seattle Seahawks. Okay. Now Seattle, you know, now it's already revisionist history and saying Seattle is nobody. Oh, Seattle, you know, they're six and six. So they're not even a winning team right now, but pot, meat, kettle, pot, meat, kettle, because the Eagles we're in the exact same situation last weekend where they ended up beating a 6 and 5 Buffalo Bills. Let me say again, a 6 and 5 Buffalo Bills. And they had to go into overtime to do it and got some extenuating help from the officials. You can say, well, that was just one game, but you can look around and say the Eagles versus the New England Patriots. 2520. You can look at let me ask, let me ask all of those haters out there, because I'm trying to trigger Eagle fans. I want to trigger y'all. Are the commanders are the commanders one of those good teams? Because the commanders with the left hand up. My home team, my loyalty, I'm at Uptown Royalty. We fight for all DC, who are we? I speak facts, facts. I'm not making riddles, the hogs. Those guys took you to overtime 38-31. Now you can again say, well, you know, <laughs> it, that, that just happens sometimes. But it happened twice. You ended up with another shootout against the commanders with the left hand up. The commanders. So we blow a team out. We hear Shady McCoy say things like, well, I want to see adversity when, when Dak throws a pick or has a fumble. Well, okay, so I thought the objective was not to. I want to see him under pressure. It's kind of crazy. Now, it doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't matter what the Cowboys do. It's just not going to be good enough. It's just not going to be good enough. And that goes for some of our fans, too. We have, in the history of the Dallas Cowboys, been witnessing the best quarterback play in our history. Nobody has had 20 touchdown passes in six games. Nobody has. Dak could be breaking almost all of the single season records. And we still have people that say, play Trey Lance. 
Oh, they were four of eight in the red zone. They suck. You got CeeDee Lamb, who will probably break the single season record in receiving of Michael Irvin's. There's not much more you can do. And, you know, now we've got people, well, the defense is suspect. You know, they paid the guys on the other side of the field, and that was a team that was definitely desperate um, to get a win. So when you have a team, much like the Buffalo Bills, that are playing for their playoff lives, um, you get their best shot. And the Cowboys found a way to win when they weren't playing their best ball. The thing that you need to take away from all of this with the Dallas Cowboys is the fact that the Cowboys, we know that their defense can be elite. We know that they can be elite. We know that their offense can score with anybody. We know that we've got a hell of a kicker. We know that we have the capability of doing multiple things. We know that we have multiple guys that can kill you. It's not just CD. It's also Brandon Cook. Now it's a Fergalicious. You're getting guys like Jalen Tolbert that are playing roles. Tony Pollard, you can't forget about him. And so knowing where we are right now versus where we were last year, you couldn't, in our offensive line, playing well. You couldn't equate, if you went in and said the 12-5 and five team that we had last year versus the team that we have right now is in such a better shape than it was um, last year. The offensive line is beginning to solidify and get better and better each week. Your quarterback is playing at elite level, not turning the ball over. He's going to end up with about half the interceptions he had last year. And at the rate, he might have double the TD passes. Your receivers are way better. I will take Brandon Cooks. Sorry, Eastside Herald. Sorry, Eastside Herald. I'll take Brandon Cooks over Noah Brown any day. And CD is right now getting up there close to being one of the best receivers in football. He's already surpassed right now A.J. Brown. And it's just getting better and better each week. And if the Cowboys' offense continues to do that each week, by the time we hit the playoffs with in stride, and we've got big tests, don't get me wrong, the Eagles next week, the Buffalo Bills, the Detroit Lions, we still have a gauntlet uh, to go through. But I am confident right now in my team, and I feel good about them. Let's go to the haterades because, again, when you sit here and you listen to them after the Cowboys win a game, it's never the Cowboys found a way to win, their defense wasn't playing good, they had some problems. Good job at elevating. It's always doom and gloom when it comes to the Cowboys. Well, you can lower your seat from unsportsmanlike on ESPN Radio. You see the squad here. Unbelievable. We've been on it so far, and of course, you guys have been talking about it yeah. for two hours. Number one takeaway on the statement the Cowboys and their quarterback made last night. Uh, nothing material changed for me with the Dallas Cowboys. Nothing Cowboys. changed. I still want to see more from them, and we'll find out what happens in week 14 when they match up against the Eagles in AT&T Stadium. Some of the issues that I was concerned with about this team coming into this year, are still some of the issues that are at play. And overall, it's the game management for Mike McCarthy. And I heard Mike Tannenbaum allude to it, but when you're 4-8 in the red zone, I'll give you credit for getting to the red zone eight times, but you can't have goal to go first down on your three-yard line and end up having to settle for three. And we saw that again at the end of the first half in that possession that they had. They had goal to go, and they ended up settling for a field goal. Gee, those types of mistakes will come back to bite you. Check that. They already have come back to bite you. We saw that against the Philadelphia Here Eagles. Here we go. Look. They had first and five from the six-yard line when they were down five points and only got two shots on the end zone in that possession. Good teams will beat you when you make those types of mistakes. And at the end of the game, inexplicably, Mike McCarthy, it's less than two minutes to go. Third down, you throw a pass to the end zone rather than running the football when the Seattle Seahawks have no timeouts and you could run the clock down to about a minute left, kick a field goal, and give them less than a minute with having to drive the length of the field for a touchdown. Made no sense to me in those situations, 
Mike McCarthy's game management continues to be a big question mark, and we saw that get them against the 49ers in back-to-back postseason. Bart, you're really on an island on this one play, on that it's, one it's decision. It's fine. I've been, on a, I've been on an island before, but like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go and explain why the, the last play from the Seattle Seahawks was the right play as well, right? It no, we'll get, get to that one in a minute. Yeah, exactly. For those just I mean, turning listen. in. Dak throws the ball in the end yeah. zone. If they run it there, fourth, who knows what might happen. Maybe yeah. you get the first down. Maybe it's fourth and one but, and you have an but, interesting decision. But, but that, was a high, that was a high percentage play right here. You had double crosses that going at the bottom. You mm-hmm. had you had other options. He just saw his best player. You put the decision making in the hands of your best player. That could have just ate it, and they could have got the same thing once right. he saw that it wasn't apparently open. They got double rut routes at the bottom that that didn't come over. Seattle did a great job, and they could that could have just ate it. But he put the ball in his playmaker's hands, and he saw an opportunity to shut the game right. out, and it was there, and it didn't it didn't work out. But it. Art. I, mean, Bart, I don't care if it's Superman out there. It was a 15 percent. It don't matter. It does matter because as it's 15 percent. You, you you have a six point. That could have just ate it. Now that there's a minute to go, and your opponent has no timeouts. So Mike McCarthy, the head coach, okay. he has went to, to the juggernaut. Mike McCarthy, if, the play caller, and say from a defensive perspective, what's best for if, us to if, win this? If, if Dak gets sacked on that, right? We kicked the field goal. Does it make the field goal any more difficult? No. 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 So it's the but same thing. But it makes thing. their chances of being able to make it's, it a game it's, it's, that it's, much harder because they have to drive the length of the field it, with no timeouts it, and less time. Listen, I don't have any problem with a head coach putting it, putting the game in the hands of his franchise quarterback, right? Like, if that was Aaron Rodgers, he might have checked out to that, and we would have no problems. <laughs> if, they, if, they would, if he would have got the touchdown or if he would have got the first down, we would have been applauding him for going for the juggler. I mean, did they win? No did the Cowboys win the game? Mike McCarthy in his office mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Coach, you just won the biggest game of your season. What's going on? They're killing you on Get Up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, they're <laughs> killing them. <laughs> I get, well, you just won the biggest game of your season. Well, you didn't beat the Philadelphia Eagles. You didn't beat the San Francisco 49ers. And those those are the teams that we're judging. Your key card is never going to work in Dallas, man. They I, got their big shot at Philly a week and a half from now. Go ahead, Lewis. Get in here on this. You, you hear, obviously, what's going on. I know no. where you stand on it. Go. This yeah, is crazy. We, we said this before. Like, you have, Bart, I, Bart I, I really do get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying as far as trust in the players. Yeah. And you like the call. You like the double move. Although, I don't know if I necessarily like that move. <laughs> I'm running the football. You have to eliminate – you have to take time off of the clock. Yeah, and play that's really what you need to do. As far as, look, we have to go ahead behind this offensive line. We need to run it over here behind Tyler Smith and Tyron, and we need to smash this thing up in here, and we need to get three yards. And if not, we need to run this clock down. We need to kick it. Then we need to go ahead and kick it off to them. We need to pin them deep, and then we need to turn loose our pass rush and close this game out. Yeah. That is the way that I'm t- I, I would assume that every single coach, all other 31 of them, would have said, that's how you play that situation. I don't care if you have Jerry Rice out there. Mm-hmm. That's Steve Young. There you that's go. That's how you play the situation. <laughs> all right, so let's leave that. So, so well, well, we'll stay on this. There's one other thing we haven't even too. gotten to yet. 36 <laughs> minutes. We haven't even gotten to the other big play here. The Seahawks fall the 6-6 six and six with this loss last yeah. night. And there's there is a scenario where that loss keeps them out of the playoffs this yeah. year. I want you to hear Geno Smith's explanation of the final play. We just showed it to you in the highlight. Fourth down. They have plenty of time to Mm -hmm. go down there and try and win this game. And they leave Micah Parsons unblocked on the final play. Geno Smith will explain it to you. Let's play that. You know, it is design. uh, He had to squeeze right tackle. had to squeeze right there versus zero. Um, So he did the right thing. Micah coming free. uh, We knew that would possibly happen. Uh, Tried to get the ball around him uh, and just wasn't able to. Mm. So just making sure, I've got all these defensive players in here. Chris Canty, is he saying the strategy was we're going to leave the best pass rusher and maybe the quickest person I've ever seen for his size unblocked on a fourth down play? There's no universe that exists where that's a good idea. (laughs) That's the franchise malpractice. Shane Waldron, uh, Pete Carroll, that is absolutely awful. This this dude is one of the (laughs) fastest defenders in the National Football League, regardless of the position. You give him a free run at the quarterback, I don't give a damn that you're running the screen. It mm. don't matter. Okay. That's not a good idea. <laughs> not Why, a good once idea. Once again, everyone disagrees with you. Why oh, is that the listen, right play? Listen, my boy Chris has had his hand in the dirt, so he don't be seeing a big picture all the time because he was going to get the passer. I had to see everything, right? So as a linebacker, cover zero. Earlier on, you got to anticipate cover zero. What this is is a pick play. 
what the genius of Dan Quinn and what he did is he dropped Demarcus Lawrence to take this to screener. This mm -hmm. is wide open. You throw the ball over head, cover zero. The outside linebacker has to peel, right? That takes him from being aggressive. So now what happened is Lawrence drops back and takes the screen. If Lawrence doesn't do that, you throw the ball over his head, he hits his head on the goalpost. Yeah. They had to anticipate mm -hmm. fourth, uh, fourth down that it was going to be a cover zero because that's what they had gotten earlier. It was harder to get it to Njigba earlier because but, he missed it when he just lofted it up there. Lawrence. This is a play where you're trying to take advantage of their aggressiveness mm -hmm. and allowing your quarterback to continue to bail mm -hmm. and throw the ball over his head. It's perfect if Lawrence doesn't get there. Yes, he gets hit. Right. Gino gets hit, but the guy hits his head on the goalpost. So let's hear from the third level of the defense. We have the, the defensive line. Line. We got the linebacker. Now let's go to the secondary. Lewis, what did you think of the call? No, I, I hated it. You can't block it. It's cover zero. Look, look, you can't block it. Look, yeah, I know, but look, look at where DJ's coming from, number one, on this screen. Number two, they, they were yes, really they the Marcus. The Marcus was in a two point. He was still no, he was he was in a two point. He's rushing the passer. He hit a move. He would he saw what he recognized the screen. He recognized DJ coming, but you see it right here. And he just hits him. He just so the play him. was dead regardless. The play was dead. But the fact of the matter is this. Look, pass rushers, you know this, Bart, because you rush the passer, and you know this, Chris, too. Nobody in the NFL has to get off that Micah has. So the you timing is going to be all screwed. You have to factor in the timing here of this play and how long it takes and who you're going to get, who you're turning loose. Look, if this was me they were turning loose on a zero, then run the damn play. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay? Mike is going to get there. Mike is going to get there, and he's going to screw up the timing. And DeMarcus is a smart player. You saw what he did. 